Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another Buzzsaw Tax Tip Tuesday, powered by Duckett Lad Dental CPAs and Advisors. Jared Duckett, back at you with Buzzsaw. Buzzsaw, how you doing, buddy? Good, Jared. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Let's jump on here and shoot a quick tax tip video. Um, I'm going to bring uh, I'm going to bring a client or a, a question I get all the time to you. And let's kind of dissect this a little bit. And you probably get this all the time as well. And the question that I get um, is I'm going to a continuing education event, right? You know, I'm going to go get some CE. I'm going to travel down to Florida. I'm going somewhere, you know, um, or I'm going to take a family trip and I'm going to do some work while I'm there. You know, how, how can I, how can I write this off? How can I deduct or how can I, I get the biggest benefit on the deductibility of it? Um, so just jump in there, Buzzsaw, at the beginning. What, what has to be true, if you will, let's say continuing education, family trip, that sort of thing. What has to be true in order for some of those expenses to be deductible? Yeah, so there's, there's kind of three tests when you're looking at being able to deduct any sort of business expense. And the first one is it has to have a legitimate business purpose. And then it has to be ordinary and necessary in the course of that business. So, um, you know, traveling for CE, that's a business purpose. It's an ordinary expense that everybody in that industry has to do. And it's necessary to, you know, continue your learning process throughout your career. Okay. So yeah, let's just kind of go through this example. I love it. A CE event, right? So yeah, let's say going to Florida and I'm going to put some days in here just so we can get a little down into the weeds to add a little more clarity and details here. So going to a continuing education event and it's, 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 it starts on a Thursday. Okay. It starts Thursday and you fly down Thursday morning. Let's say, let's say it starts at noon. So you fly down Thursday morning. Again, look at the three-part test, right? Is there a business purpose for, and we'll talk about the specific expenditures there, but business purpose, ordinary, necessary. So make sure it meets those three things. Okay. So let's say the CE events on a Thursday and a Friday, and let's say the weekends are free, but then the Monday you have a follow-up event, um, that sort of thing. So talk about what, how much work has to be done per day and that sort of thing in order to get some deductions here. Yeah. So you're only going to be worried about actual weekdays. And on those weekdays, you need to be making sure that you're spending more than 50% of your time on business purposes. So that would be four hours. A typical workday is eight. So you need to be spending more than four hours on business to count that weekday as a, as a business expense travel day. And then, you know, you kind of mentioned you're going over a weekend. Well, those weekends, those don't count. You don't have to pass the, the 50% test on those weekend days. As long as you worked 50% on business Thursday, Friday, and Monday, you can deduct all those hotel costs and other expense costs for those two weekend days, even though you didn't do any business work. Mm, so that's interesting. That's key right there, right? Mm -hmm. So again, let's do the example. Fly down on a Thursday, have a CE event that you spend at least four hours on. And again, we're not going to get too, too down to the weeds here. This is specifically you know, travel within the United States. International is just a little bit different. And we're not going to go down that, but um, specifically in the United States, we're looking at 50% or more on business time. So fly down on Thursday, CE event for four plus hours, if you will. Friday, CE event, four plus hours. Saturday and Sunday, you don't do any work, right? Say you hang out, you, you, you go sightseeing, do all that stuff. That hotel, meals, and that sort of thing is all deductible for that weekend, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, what if you take family members with you well how, how does that work i get you know because say they're going on a sea event and they're going to go thursday friday and monday but they want to take a spouse and some kids for the for the weekend to hang out and do some sightseeing that sort of thing how does that work with with family members yeah so in order to deduct their expenses they have to also be traveling for business purposes so if your spouse if your kids work in the business with you all of their expenses can also be deductible if they don't then you know you won't be able to deduct all of their expenses. Now maybe you can kind of look at the hotel because you might just have used one hotel room regardless. So that could still be deductible, but plane tickets, meals for them, if it's not for business purposes, those are not going to be able to be uh, deductible. Yeah, that's perfect. That's key to know because most of the time people travel with their family, especially if you got a free weekend in there. So again, just some good tips to kind of keep in mind. Um, and, and I'll say it again, you'll hear it from us all the time. 
document, 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 you know, as you go down and you've got the invoices for your hotels or the receipts and the meals entertainment document that you, you know, you did CE or, or did some work. Maybe you're not even going for a CE event, but you're going to travel down to um, Florida. Maybe you're looking to buy some dental practices in Florida or whatever. I could just keep using Florida as the state, but you go around for four plus hours on the Thursday and look at locations, talk with, you know, individuals or whatever about purchasing practices. Um, again, just make sure you're hitting that four hours plus and everything really becomes deductible to a degree. Um, so just a lot of planning you guys can keep in mind, especially on how the weekends roll into it, because you can get up almost all of it to a degree. But so I'm going to put a disclaimer that, you know, let's say on a weekend you go out and uh, do some sort of entertainment, right? So you go out and do some crazy offshore fishing deal on the weekend probably not deductible if it's just your family now if there's business purpose to it it could be but if it's just your family on a weekend i would say that's probably not deductible right that, that's right i think probably you just want to stick to those hotel costs that uh, are keeping you there in order to, to work on monday yeah again ordinary necessary so that's right perfect. that's right but so i appreciate you as always man um any any parting comments uh any people that they can take away from this yeah, I mean, just proper planning, you know, so make sure that you're going to be able to hit that 50% test on each of those weekdays. And then if you can work it around a weekend, even better, take those two days and uh, enjoy some family time. That's what I was going to say. Always plan those business trips around a weekend where you can benefit from some downtime and also get the deductibility of them. So yep, good stuff. Buzzsaw, appreciate it, buddy. Um, and uh, everybody out there, if you guys have questions on this, let us know. We're here to help. And I'll say it again you know, share this, uh, but subscribe, subscribe to the YouTube channel, click the notification, the bell button. So it comes right to your phone. Um, we're here to give you guys some tax tips to hopefully make your lives a little bit better, but everybody out there, we'll see you next time. You guys have a great week. All right. Thanks, Jared.